Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. It's been a while since we've done one of these. Please excuse the mess in the back. My place is turning into a bit of a warehouse at the moment. In fact, I need to get some stuff to owners that'll give them more playing time. I'll probably post a Discord first, so make sure you're on there. You should be on our Discord server anyways, because it's a fun time and the notifications are generally more reliable than YouTube's for new uploads. No takers, I'll probably post to social media and the reverb store, links to all that in the description. In the meantime, been absolutely bombarded with Epiphone related questions and uh yeah i'm hyped to hell so if you're enjoying the video at any time hit the like button that actually really helps out and let's jump into your questions uh did you see matt hafey demoing his new prototypes <laughs> yeah i saw that i was really excited because i thought they were just tweaking some minor aesthetic things like finalizing some details they've also changed some important stuff under the hood though uh, and we'll get to that in a second. First, the surface level things. The new prototypes have his actual signature fluences. It's basically just the regular modern set, but with a gold squiggly stripe, so it looks extra sick and works so well in both the white and the black models. The knobs have been changed as well. On the new prototypes, they're like knurled speed knobs. And I don't know if I necessarily like the look of them. They look massive for some reason. Maybe it's because they're solid colors. Like if they were transparent with the numbers, you know, like a normal speed knob, but with textured edges, it would look more natural instead of this, which looks really, really odd. That goes for both the black and the gold knobs. But in terms of practicality, like being attached to push pull pots, having something to grab is gonna make changing voices a lot easier, especially in a live context where things get a little sweaty. Locking Grover's, Hafey's signature on the back of the headstock. He also mentioned they'll come in hard cases this time, which will also have the signature. And he also says in the reveal video that the necks are slimmer, like the thinnest neck he's ever felt on a Les Paul. And they've also, uh, they've also gotten rid of the access neck heel. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? They had it on the first prototypes, they had it on the first run of signatures, the snowfalls. They've gotten rid of the access neck heel in favor of the modern neck heel. Uh, okay, rant incoming. Sheriff, he's over here. God. I mean, look, it's not my signature. My opinion doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna give it anyways. Personally, I'd be a little disappointed if these became the final versions. The Access Neck Heel isn't the most natural feeling solution in 2021. Like Gibson slash Epiphone could learn a lot from ESP or Solar or Chapman or like, there's a lot of great examples of modern ergonomic neck joints out there. But regardless, the Access is a hell of a lot better than the modern joint. The modern joint is just not good. It doesn't take a lot of material. It's still kind of blocky. It's not formed to the human hands. It's like, it's like when you've got a sink full of dirty dishes and you wash one plate and say that you did something. Like technically, yes, the situation has improved, but what was the point of that? Like the modern is even to a small degree better than the big old block, but so is like just about anything else. When you have the access joint, why would you use the modern? Unless, I guess, you're trying to share bodies for production between the modern, the prophecy, and the Hafey models. So I'm a fan of the knurled knobs, the concepts more than the look, the new signature fluences, locking Grover's, headstock signature, hard case, all that stuff sounds awesome in an affordable Les Paul Custom. That modern neck heel though, it's especially disappointing since it came from the Axis, which I think is a much better solution. I'm still gonna want one because they look sick, but if that modern joint makes it onto the final version, not gonna lie, that won't bother me. Again, not my signature, those are just my opinions though, would love to know what you're thinking. Is neck joint something you actually care a lot about, or is that just my guitar designer OCD overreacting? Speaking of new Epiphone prototypes though, anyone else catch that little tease on Adam Jones' Instagram? Epiphone version of the most hyped Gibson signature from last year confirmed. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> no picture of the actual guitar yet, just the hard case. But that's not gonna stop us, this thing is hyped as already. Just in case, here's a quick recap so we're all on the same page. Adam Jones, guitarist and tool, had one of the coolest Gibson signatures in recent memory. 1979 Les Paul Custom reissue in Silver Burst. Two versions, one signed and tastefully aged, the other vintage original spec. Both with that antique silver burst color, so it's starting to green a little bit. Came stock with a reverse mounted Gibson custom bucker in the neck, and then a custom wound Seymour Duncan DDJ in the bridge. 70s style neck and volute, that's one of the things that makes Norlin type Les Pauls my favorites. That neck that I have on my own 72 and 74. 
for so good. So it was a super sick run of guitars, but between being a custom shop signature and being a limited edition, 179 of the vintage original spec and 79 of the H and signed, if you don't count the 13 that were stolen and then remade, they were very, very expensive. $6,000 for the VOS and a full 10 grand for the aged and signed. Now listen, I love Les Paul Customs, specifically 70s Les Paul Customs, and I don't have a silver burst yet, but for that amount of money, I'm good, thankfully, and we kinda saw this coming with how popular the Gibson Custom run was, Epiphone to the rescue. Obviously the specs won't be exactly the same, but we'll get a very similar vibe for much less money. So knowing Epiphone's MO, we can make some pretty educated guesses as to what this model's gonna be about. Under a grand, obviously with a hard case. I'm guessing 849, like the glittery is <laughs> Tommy Thayer model. Love that guitar. Epiphone unfortunately doesn't do nitro right now. How sick would it be if they did like a thin roadborn thing, like how Fender does? Instead, Epiphone likes to do their aged gloss. It basically feels like satin, maybe a little more reflective. It's the same thing they used on the Jerry James Nichols Old Glory, the updated Prophecies, the 59 reissue, all guitars I enjoyed a lot. I think we'll see the same pickups as the Gibson. I mean, that was just one of those signature artist specs. I don't think they'll mess with that. They'll keep the Volute just like they did with the Vivian Campbell signature a couple years back. That was another 70s style reissue. I never got to play one, so I don't know what the neck profile was like, but at least on the Adam Jones, I hope they try and replicate a historically accurate 70s style neck profile because they're super comfortable, very similar to ESP's thin U neck shape. But it's equally as likely that Epiphone will just slap their D-shaped slim taper on the thing and call it a day. That would be a shame, in my opinion, though it probably would help speed up production and get them into our hands sooner. We'll just have to wait and see. Another thing we won't quite know until more info is released is the color. I mean, yes, it's fairly safe to say it's gonna be a silver burst, but what kind? There's precedent for if the Gibson version is aged or it's a VOS reissue, then the Epiphone is like a reproduction of what that guitar might have looked like when it was brand new. It's a clever way for them to be able to produce new guitars quickly without making too many changes from their other models, which would complicate the process. There's one model they did it with quite recently, and I can't quite remember which one it was. Maybe it's the Frampton Phoenix Les Paul they did it with? Whatever, Jordan can verify. So either we'll get a new looking Silver Burst with 70 specs and the custom electronics, or the antique Silver Burst, and I'm fairly sure it'll be the latter. I mean, when people think of the Adam Jones Les Paul, that's the color they think of. And Epiphone was already pretty close with the Olive Age Gloss Les Paul Prophecies. But those are just my guesses. Here's where I throw it to you. What do you think about the color, but also the specs? Like, what do you think we'll see? I know it's early days. We don't even have a picture of the actual guitar yet, but I'm already hyped. What about you? Man, Epiphone has some fun stuff coming up. Completely forgot that the Slash model's on the horizon too. Like, all right, Epiphone, let's go. I'm ready. Will we get more Pringle? That's something the world really needs right now. Hey, Pringle. Here, say hi to the internet. <gasps> the internet. Now it's time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week. Stupid dickhead. No one guitar should ever have coil splitting or something <laughs> like that. Damn kids like you are like pimp my ride. You want a guitar with coil splitting, Netflix button, TV screen, triple bindig, and neck so thin as Paris Hilton in the early 2000s and so on. People like you destroying the instrument. Go buy yourself an iPhone with GarageBand. 2000, so like 20 years ago? Bro, solid relevant reference. Yeah, I don't know, there's just some angry <laughs> weirdos on the internet. On to more positive things, patron shout out of the episode goes to Maria A. Massive thanks to you and all the other patron community members for making this channel possible. You guys are amazing. Music recommendation of the week, check out While She Sleeps' new album, Sleep Society. Specifically the single, Systematic. <laughs> Slaps. I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you like metalcore, While She Sleeps never disappoints. And that'll do it for this short episode of Ask a Fish. We didn't get to cover that much this week. I'm working on a bunch of gear demos, so hopefully next week we'll have a longer episode where we can cover more topics. Subscribe, notification bell, you know the drill. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.